Hello, in this video, I'm going to build SageMath from source on CoCalc so that you could easily do development later or just have your own custom version with maybe some custom things pulled in. So first, let's start up a project. And I have one here I've been doing some demos with, which will start running. And in order to build Sage, I'm going to use a compute server which I get by clicking on servers. I'm doing this because I'd like the build to go quickly. CoCalc itself, these projects, though they're nice and easy to get going with, they uh, don't have very much in the way of compute resources by default. Notice that this only has one CPU and eight gigabytes of memory and only three gigs of disk space, which isn't quite enough to build Sage. So instead, what I will do is create a compute server that has a lot more power. So build Sage from source. And we need a little more sagey color. Now let's choose um, a simple environment, Python. And then uh, one of my favorite machine types, because they're very fast and very affordable, is these T2Ds. They're AMD Epic machines. So let's choose one with uh, 30, uh, actually let's make it 60 CPUs and 240 gigabytes of memory. And let's see, what's the cheapest place? 42 cents an hour in Europe. So we'll go with that one. Um, we also want a fast disk. So that looks reasonably good, an SSD. And we're building Sage. Let's make sure we have, say, 25 gigabytes of disk space. And most importantly, we need a directory that is very fast because we're, this is going to be an enormously fast build. We don't want to build on a networked uh, file system, which would be pretty slow. Like if every single read and write involves a round trip between the United States and Spain, that's not going to be good. It'll take forever. So instead, um, we'll make a directory called Sage, which is a very fast local directory on the SSD. Okay, so that's everything. Let's go. Okay, this will start up in just a second. Well, maybe a little bit more than a second because it's a pretty big machine with a lot of memory to check and so on. But hopefully it'll start up. Once it starts, we'll download Sage from source. I'll just get clone the latest version from GitHub and then we'll build it. So while I'm waiting for this to start, I'm gonna go over to GitHub and look for Sage. And so this is the URL I'm going to clone from. All right, it's already up and running. It only took a few seconds. Now let's make a terminal where we're going to build Sage. Um, I'll just call it build sage terminal. Here it is. And we're going to move this terminal so that it's running on the compute server we just started up. Now we have to wait a little while for it to finish booting, setting up its little uh, local copy of um, the CoCalc daemons and so on. So here it goes. Um, this just gives general information about mounting the network file system and it's there. If you want to see any of that status information, you can always click on the bar at the top. And then that drop down will show you all of this information. Okay, so we now have um, our compute server. Let's, com let's check that it actually has an enormous number of processors. I guess you need to use HTOP to see all 60 of them. And it does. Let's go to this uh, directory sage and let's git clone. So git clone the sage source code. So this is copying all the data from GitHub to this server that's running in Spain where we're going to build Sage from source. And we used a really powerful server because Sage, its build system um, uses make and it can do each of the steps in parallel. So it will fully leverage the power of this server. Okay, so I tried to do make build and it failed because I don't have M4 installed. So sudo apt git install m4. One nice thing about compute servers is if there's anything that's not installed, you can just be sudo and install it. Um, whereas in the normal cocalc.com projects, you can't since you can't be root there. So 
So it looks like it's bootstrapping, setting up um, the files needed to configure Sage. Okay, and now it says that Sage is not configured. So what just happened is it created the configure file, and now we'll run it. Woohoo! All right, so now um, it suggests installing large numbers of packages to speed up the build, but we're on a super fast machine. Let's just build everything without installing anything extra. Let's run this in Tmux so that we can switch and look at top at the same time. Also, the output when you build on such a powerful machine, I mean, it is enormously fast, the amount of output that's going to appear. And with Tmux, it's nice to just kind of put that in the background to avoid any trouble. Okay, so here we go. Uh-oh. Uh, we make dash j16. Make sure the parallel build still works that way in Sage, because who knows these days. Yep, it does work that way. I wrote it that way a long time ago. Okay, so everywhere in the Sage build system, it uses this environment variable make, and and then um, automatically it'll pass in dash j60. All right, let's go. Release the Kraken. All right, so it's doing stuff. So at this point, I'm going to switch to another terminal in uh, Tmux to see what's happening. OK, so you can see that there's a little bit of build activity. It's starting to take off. And we can always switch back and forth if you know the Tmux keyboard strokes, keystrokes. So right now it's building GMP, and now that's very fast. So let's look. Should be seeing some stuff happening. See how the cores are all being used, etc. By the way, one really cool thing about this particular machine type, this T2D, is that each vCPU is an actual full core, not just a partial core. And that gives us a lot more of a speed up when we're running 60 at once. So you can see that there's a large number of makes happening simultaneously of different packages. And yeah, that's a lot of stuff flying by. All right, so there it goes. We're using up uh, quite a bit of our CPU. Wow. And how much does this cost? So let's see. The cost is 42 cents per hour. And we just get charged by the second. And that includes the external IP address, the disk, everything. And in terms of disk, um, we have 25 gigabytes free. If the disk gets low, you can click on edit and to just go down and add space. And it happens live online without having to reboot the server. So there goes our build, completely crazy stuff flying by. And we'll just wait. Okay, so we waited um, 17 minutes and the entire Sage build has completed. So let's see if it works. The moment of truth after 17 minutes of building from source. Okay, almost 18 minutes. And there we are. We have the latest release candidate of Sage. Let's see if it can do anything useful. Yes. After the next few years. There they are. So there's a useful table. Um, in case you didn't know it, the next few prime years are the twin primes 2027 with 2029, and then a whole bunch of composites in 2039, and all the way up to 2050. Those are the three prime years that are coming up. Okay. All right. Thank you for uh, building Sage. In case you're curious, you can check how much this all cost by going to Upgrades and then just take a look. Um, let's see, our network cost is zero because we don't have incoming network and our total compute cost was 17 cents to run this 
super powerful server for 25 minutes. Oh, the next thing you might want to do at this point, now that you've built Sage, you can shut down the server, which I'll do, and then you can reconfigure it to have a, a much more affordable processor with um, like two CPUs instead of 60. And then we could do things like um, set it up to uh, have a Jupyter kernel and then use Jupyter with our new copy of Sage with its special stuff, you know, its latest version, whatever special patches you apply, etc. So let's do that. Okay, so I'm going to click on edit. And instead of this super fast, powerful machine, I'm going to switch it to be a T2D standard, I don't know, let's say standard two, which is pretty comparable to like a good project you'd pay a lot for in CoCalc. And probably similar to, I mean, it's good for a lot of stuff. It costs one penny per hour. Or if you leave it on all month, $16. So it's basically very little. Um, so let's just start this one up. And uh, no, there's no easy way to move it currently in CoCalc from Spain back to the United States or something like that. Um, that's not currently implemented, moving from one region to another, but it is on the roadmap. Okay, so it's now already running. Um, we'll connect to it in a second and just see that it's there and that we still have Sage. And then the next thing we'll do is configure a Jupyter kernel that lets us run Sage on here through a Jupyter notebook instead of only using it through the command line terminal or running scripts using it. Okay, so here's our terminal again. Um, so in just moments, we switch from having a 60 CPU machine that cost 42 cents an hour to a two CPU machine that cost two cents per hour. And let's see if we still have Sage. I hope we do. There it is, our pre-release version of Sage, ready to go. And it can do stuff. It can do silly, sagey stuff. Okay. More Sage stuff, can't avoid doing that um, using MW rank. Let's, uh, get a Jupyter kernel to work here. So right now the situation is that if I say new Jupyter notebook, I can set the Jupyter notebook to run on the compute server as follows. Okay, so it's now running on the compute server, but notice there's only this Python kernel. That's just like the system-wide Python. We can select it, but unfortunately, the Sage install we set up has nothing to do with it. So this is just gonna give us an error because Sage is installed in a completely different place. The system-wide Python doesn't know anything about it. So what we need to do is make the kernel, the Jupyter kernel that comes with Sage available system-wide. Uh, Jupyter, set up Sage math as a Jupyter kernel right here. So the following command will install Sage math as a new kernel. So that's what we want to do. So let's just run it. Oh, um, problem is Sage is not in my path. Hmm, no such file or directory. And I can't even see it through myself. Oh, it's complaining because I didn't build the documentation. I type make build, which doesn't build the docs. The docs take a long time to build and don't build very well in parallel. Um, and so for some reason it's complaining about that. But um, let's just take this kernel spec and copy it over, or look at it for a second, and then copy it over. Um, having a little trouble seeing through my image, so I'm just gonna open the kernel and it looks good. Okay, so I just copied it over, and now to test, I'll do Jup Jupyter, Jupyter kernel spec list. That'll show all installed kernels. There you can see that Sage math is definitely there. I think the other 
command I typed before actually did set up the kernel. It just gave an error at the end because of the doc being missing, but it was still all there. In any case, let's go back to our Jupyter notebook and let's um, refresh the list of kernels and then check to see that Sage is there and it is. Great, so I just selected the Sage kernel and now I'm going to try this again and see that it's there. And you can see this is spinning, showing that it's starting up. And now it's running and it successfully imported Sage all. And let's try our little factoring exercise for n in 2023 to 2100, print n, factor n. And there you are. So we're now using um, a Jupyter kernel. We built it from source in 17 minutes. It's for the latest development version of Sage. You could take any like special code you're writing or pull requests or whatever and merge them into this and then um, it would be available to run. And in this way, you can run um, your own copy of Sage easily in CodeCalc. And you have it on your own dedicated server. In this case, it's two cents per hour when it's running. And there's some cool features, like you can suspend it. That um, saves your, the exact state of everything you're doing to RAM, uh, to, I mean, in RAM to disk. And it's extremely cheap. While it's suspended, it's like $6 a month. And then when you resume later, all the variables you had, everything is exactly like you left it. And that's independent of whether or not you restart or stop your project in CoCalc. So you can have many of these. And if for a little while you need a faster machine, just stop it, click edit, and you can change the um, processors and the memory. So it's a very powerful way of working. It's much more powerful than your laptop because um, the machines available on Google Cloud are crazy like up to 11 terabytes of RAM and 65 terabytes of disk space. So it is definitely faster than your local server or laptop. Okay, so now um, the next thing I'm gonna do is just, um, just shut this down. All right, thanks so much for watching. Uh, I hope you try out building Sage from source on CoCalc and using Jupyter kernels and so on. Bye.